What's up guys, Houndish here, and today we're jumping in with some Destiny 2 news, and in this one we get a handful of updates from Bungie, so they talk about a bunch of bugs and glitches in the game, and they also discuss the winners for Guardian Games and the tiebreaker system that they had to set up. On top of that, they tease more reveals for Into the Light though, and we can expect a full breakdown of all of the new weapons and potential perk rolls later this week, plus they tease some exotic mission content and extra surprises that'll be revealed shortly. So we'll talk about that, some new quests and secrets, and a bunch of other items in the video. So as always guys, I hope you enjoy this one, and if you do, be sure to get subscribed for more Destiny content, but without further delay, let's get into it. And firstly today, we have a couple of updates from Bungie right here. This one actually relates to the Collector's Edition for the final shape. And the D2 team said, Hello Guardians, in the event that Zavala gets locked in the compartment, the door on the back of the tower is opened by a magnetic lock. So any magnet should be able to open the door while the unit is powered on. Bit of a random one right there. Of course, it won't affect many people, but... There's a hidden compartment on the Collector's Edition, and when you first open it, it actually has the Cade figure hidden in the back, which is something I didn't notice the first time I looked at it, but players went ahead and put Zavala inside of the compartment, only to find that they then couldn't reopen it. So if that's you, keep in mind that a magnet can be used to open that back door. Other quick updates though, and Bungie Help said the issue causing some players' character data to appear as unavailable has been resolved, and they say there was a back-end routing error on the servers which resulted in some players logging into incorrect environments of the game, and that was from a few days ago where some folks signed in and the game didn't actually display their characters, which is a bit scary. And as we saw in the reveal for Into the Light, the D2 team did correct the twid from last week and they said the upcoming armor set for Into the Light is not inspired directly by Destiny 1 armor, but instead is inspired by early concepts from year one of Destiny 2. And of course, we've got a better look at that now. We'll talk more about Into the Light in just a moment, but in relation to Guardian Games, the D2 team said for the first time ever in history, We've encountered a three-way gold medal tie with Hunters, Titans, and Warlocks, all winning seven days each. But there can only be one winner, and with the tiebreaker, Hunters are the 2024 Guardian Games champions. But they add that Guardian Games has built-in tiebreakers to determine a winner in case of a tie, and in the case that all classes are tied in terms of daily winners, then we calculate each class's total rank by assigning a point value to each placement, and tallying the total. And with Hunters earning 11 silver daily medals to Warlocks 10 silver daily medals, Hunters have earned the highest total total rank and have won Guardian Games 2024. So a bit of a justification for how that works. And as always, share your thoughts down below. But in relation to Into the Light, a couple of extra things worth keeping in mind here. Firstly, Bungie say today on March 27th, all weapons and perk rolls for Into the Light will be revealed in a Bungie blog. So they're going to go into a little bit more depth about all of the potential roles. Of course, we got a preview of a bunch of them in the live stream yesterday. So that's cool. And it's something else to look out for. I'll keep you posted. Plus, they tease that next week, they'll be walking through some exotic mission content and the craftable weapons which will be available within. And that's something that they're reserving for the next Into the Light stream. So that's an interesting one because of course it indicates Bungie will be adding another exotic mission back into the rotation. And there had been leaks and speculation about the potential of the Whisper of the Worm mission coming back, especially given that Whispers had a new exotic ornament added. So that one's now in the Eververse rotation. And of course, before Recluse or Hammerhead were revealed, we found that ornaments for those had been added to the Eververse rotation as well. So what we can say is confirmed is that some kind of reprisal of exotic mission content is coming with Into the Light. We don't have confirmation of exactly what that will be, but there are strong indications that it could be the Whisper mission on IO. So that's interesting. We'll look out for that next week. But they've also said in next week's stream, they'll walk through the PvP map pack and there'll be a couple of additional surprises in there as well. So that sounds pretty juicy. A couple of extra bits from the reveal that we've had this week though. You'll have noticed a bunch of chests in the Hall of Champions that Bungie revealed. And there are kind of different bundles of chests for each class. But we can see, looking at the objectives on them, they require Shaq's reputation ranks and trophies of bravery, and those requirements are set at different thresholds. So this one requires rank 14 and 50 trophies of bravery, where Bungie have confirmed that those trophies will drop both inside of the Onslaught game mode and wider Destiny content. Plus, bundles of those trophies will drop as part of the Shaq's rank rewards. But something else hidden inside of the space is a Grimoire card, actually next to one of the Shaq's holograms. Of course, we don't have Grimoire cards in Destiny 2 right now, so we're potentially going to see a return of those. Whether that'll be in the same capacity as Destiny 1 or purely as additional lore for Into the Light isn't entirely clear just yet. It's even possible that they're going to be bringing the cards back as a part of the final shape as well. But that's a secret one to look out for when we finally get into the new social space. And in terms of the Super Black Key, Bungie have confirmed that that shader will be returning from Destiny 1. And the first one can be earned at rank 17 on Lord Chax. And it says this is one of two keys needed to unlock the Super Black containment at the rear of the Hall of Champions. But the other 
other key, Super Black Key Omega, is held by our side 9940, which will require the completion of weekly weapon quests to unlock. So to get Super Black, we basically have to max out the rank at Shacks. Then looking at our side's menu, the key there is greyed out, so it's either going to require the completion of four of the weekly quests or all of the weapon quests for the update. And we know that there are 12 weapons total, so there'll certainly be a bit of work required in order to unlock Super Black. However, it seems possible that we'll unlock other kind of secrets along the way. So some pretty interesting stuff hidden in that new social space. And it would also appear that there are a few juicy bits of content for Into the Light that we haven't seen yet. So I'll keep you posted on those and stay locked and loaded as always. A couple of final things here though, and I'm a whale on Reddit did share with the upcoming silver sale. Buying silver for the final shape episodes and the dungeon pass is better value than the deluxe edition. And so this week, all silver packages in the game are discounted by 20%. That'll run up until April 2nd. And so the Reddit thread basically says that players can save a little bit of cash by purchasing the 3,000, 1,000, and 500 silver bundles with the extra silver, and then purchasing the base final shape, three episodes, and the dungeon pass separately, actually turning out to be the cheapest way to do it. It. So something to keep in mind, and I'll link the Reddit thread down below for reference. A final thing to mention right here though, well, there's a pretty cool glitch inside of the Corrupted Strike on a Strand Titan. And basically, if you apply the auto melee setting, when you pick up one of the Corrupted Orbs, if it's fully charged, it will renew your melee energy continuously. And so while you're carrying the orb, if you trigger Fletchered Storm, it's possible for that melee ability to continuously fire. So as you can see on the elevator in the Corrupted, I trigger Fletchered Storm, and I'm able to continuously use it all the way until the lift is at the bottom and take out all of the enemies that spawn. Plus it's something you can do in the final boss room. So pretty fun glitch and it definitely makes parts of the strike much easier. Obviously this won't be featured as the nightfall for a little while again now, but something random and fun to do if you encounter the strike and of course when it comes back as the nightfall might even be somewhat beneficial in the elevator and final boss encounters. So just something I wanted to share right there. But for today guys that's what we have to speak about in the video. So as always I hope this one has been interesting and if it has a rating below really helps us out on the channel. Also be sure to get subscribed so I can keep you posted with more Destiny content and share your thoughts on everything we've covered in the comment section. But otherwise, I appreciate you tuning in and I hope you guys have an awesome day. You've kind of done some redesigns and expanded even just on the on the loot pool, or pardon me, on the perk pool rather. Um, how did you guys kind of go about the process of sort of rebuilding these weapons for this modern era of Destiny? Yeah, I mean, we held off on bringing Mountaintop uh into the sort of modern destiny because it was just way too strong in both PvP and in PvE. Yeah. Uh, in PvP, it was like a, a pretty unpleasant meta when Mountaintop was part of everyone's <laughs> loadout, so we, we definitely didn't want it to be able to one-hit kill uh, even with a direct hit in PvP anymore. Fair. So we've reduced that a little bit. Uh, but we also um, saw how excited people were for the Danger Zone rocket launcher perk, uh, yeah. launching you into the air. So we've made that part of the base behavior of the new um, micro missile frame grenade launcher intrinsic. Yeah. So they do super um, low self damage and give yourself massive physics impulse. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the, the Team Fortress 2 soldier mains are just suddenly dusting off their <laughs> rocket launchers yeah. in real time right now, obviously. Yeah.